All right, so now we have our burette prepared with sodium hydroxide at about three, and we've recorded the initial burette reading. We have our flask that has 10.00 milliliters of vinegar acid in it, a little bit of water, stir bar, and make sure you've added your phenophthalene indicator. Okay, what we're gonna do now is add the base to the acid so it'll neutralize each other. Our goal is to get to a pH of seven because that's neutral. This indicator actually is colorless in acid. As you can see, there's no color. It is colorless at neutral, and then it turns pink when we're basic, like this one. Our goal is to get as close to seven as, as possible. So we're going for a pale, pale, pale pink, not this. This is like pH 10 or 11. That's not neutral, that's no good. That's a redo. So we're gonna add the sodium hydroxide into the flask and stop it when it's pale, pale, pale pink. Now, so we need to get it stirring. We want it to stir briskly but not splash. So around four or five. Now I know that we can add eight milliliters safely. So I'm at three. If I'm gonna add eight, that takes me down to 11. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and let it go down to 11. And now I know you can't see it, but it's actually a little bit pink where it's landing. I'm going to discuss that in just a minute. So I'm adding eight milliliters quickly. Okay, so now I'm at 11. Now, it was a little pink there. Why is that? Well, I just said it's pink in base. So I'm dropping sodium hydroxide into the flask. Right where it hits, it turns pink because it's sodium hydroxide. But then the acid comes up to the sodium hydroxide, reacts with it, neutralizes it, and the color goes away because there's still more acid vinegar in the flask. I haven't added enough sodium hydroxide to get to pH 7 yet. Okay, so it's turned pink a little bit because the sodium hydroxide was concentrated where it landed, and that turned pink. But then the acid neutralized the sodium hydroxide, and the color went away because I'm still more acidic than basic, so it's still colorless. However, I'm getting closer, so now I'm going to open it up and just do drop by drop. Drop, 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 drop. That's a little too fast. Okay, drop, 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 and now we wait. We're waiting for it to turn pink and stay pink. If we can zoom in and look at this turning pink, so you may just have to come up here. But we want to see how it's turning pink when it drops, and then it goes away. So pink pink, pink, but it's going away each time because it's still more acidic than basic. And now the pink is starting to last a little bit longer. So I know I'm getting closer, so I'm getting ready in case I need to turn it off. I'm waiting for the pink to stay. And again, I want it to be pale pink, not a dark pink. It's getting closer and closer. I'm going to slow down a little bit. Drop. 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 Because I don't want to miss it. So I don't want it to turn hot pink. And we wait. It's just going to take one drop to turn pink. 
and two drops is the difference between pale pink and hot pink. And remember, hot pink is bad. That's a redo. Okay, so the pink is lasting longer and longer. Oh, that lasted quite a while. Okay, so now I'm telling I'm getting close. Oh, it's gonna be the next one. I'm gonna stop. All right, so see how pale pink it is? So we stop there. Whoops, other way. And we're gonna record our volume, and that'll be our final volume. And watch what happens if I add just one more drop. Oh, that one's actually okay. So now it's a darker pink. The other one was better. Now that's getting pretty dark. So I really caught it good. And three, that's getting a little too dark. Okay, so again, you just have a few drops to catch it, pale pink, and we're going to do three of these, and then we're done. All right.